The Odyssey, Book 22, A Summary Odysseus throws off his rags, leaps onto the threshold and prepares his bow. He shouts that the suitor's fate is sealed, and then shoots at Antinous, who had just reached for his cup to drink wine. He is shot in the neck, and he dies and bleeds graphically. The graphic imagery emphasises the fate of the suitors, um, foreshadows the rest of the, their death. When the suitors see this, they run around in confusion and try to find weapons, but there are none. Um, in, oh, which book was it? I think it's uh, 18 or 19. Um, Odysseus and Telemachus hide the book, hide the, the weaponry and armour. They tell Odysseus that they will kill him. They all think that Odysseus killed Antinous by accident. Odysseus gives them a black look and tells them that they that they that they took from his household, raped his maids, and courted his wife because they didn't think he'd return, and their fate is sealed. They are all very scared, and Eurymachus blames Antinous for all of their wrongdoings and says that no more death needs to occur. They will all repay Odysseus with twenty oxen and riches. So he is now taken over from Antinous as the dominant suitor, trying to use rhetoric to get out of this situation. Odysseus says that he is still going to kill them. Their choice is either to fight or attempt to flee, though none will escape. Eurymachus tells the other suitors to draw their swords and use the tables as shields so that they can escape and raise an alarm in town. Odysseus shoots Eurymachus and the arrow pierces his liver. He dies. Anaphonimus tries to attack Odysseus, but Telemachus strikes him down with a spear. This is fate. Um, this had been included by Homer and slash Athene when Odysseus tried to warn Anaphonimus in Book 18. Telemachus leaves the spear in Anaphonimus' body because he, is, because he is scared that someone will strike him as he pulls it out. Telemachus says that he is going to get arms from the storeroom. Odysseus tells him to be quick because he'll soon run out of arrows. Telemachus chooses four shields, eight spears, and four helmets. Back in the hall, he and the two servants, um, Philotius and Eumaeus, arm themselves and stand next to Odysseus. Um, Odysseus keeps shooting until he runs out of arrows and the dead lion piles. He gets a shield, helmet, and two spears. Odysseus tells Eumaeus to guard the side door, and then Agelaus tells Melanthius to go and raise an alarm, but he knows he can't get out, so he says he will go to find arms instead. Melanthius is one of the um, servants who has switched loyalties to the suitors rather than Odysseus. He goes to the storeroom where he grabs arms and returns to give to the suitors. When Odysseus sees the suitors arming themselves, he is very scared. He tells Telemachus that he thinks the betrayal was either a woman or Melanthius. Telemachus tells Odysseus that he must have left the storeroom door open. He tells Eumaeus to find out who has given the suitors weaponry. They see Melanthius leaving to go back to the storeroom, and Odysseus says that he and Telemachus will fight the suitors, while Eumaeus and Philotius must go to the storeroom, strap Melanthius to a plank and hang him from the roof to torture him. The servants do exactly that, catching Melanthius as he emerges and carrying armour. They jeer at him as he hangs and then return to the hall. Athene appears disguised as mentor. Odysseus shouts to her and asks for help. He actually has an idea about who she really was, which is quite interesting because he doesn't usually, and she's been disguised as mentor quite a lot. Um, so she, he's asking her for help, but really, he's asking mentor for help, but really he's asking Athene. The suitors threaten her not to join Odysseus, and Athene is pissed off and essentially tells Odysseus to man up. Um... She talks about Troy and his skills and tells him, just fight it, you know how to do this. Athene, however, doesn't grant him victory straight away, but tests him and Telemachus. She turns into a swallow and perches on the rafters. The six bravest remaining suitors throw their spears at Odysseus, but Athene makes them all miss. The four men in Odysseus's squad, as it were, um, so this is Elem Odysseus, Telemachus, Eumaeus and Philotius. I called it the squad just because... That was easier than saying all of their names again. Um, so they all aim and shoot together, taking out four suitors. The rest retreat into a corner, so Odysseus's men can retrieve weapons from the dead. The suitors throw the spears again, but Athene makes them miss. Amphimedon's spear grazes Telemachus' wrist, and another spear scratches Eumaeus's shoulder. Odysseus's squad shoot again and take down four more suitors. They continue to fight as Athene rages, raises her aegis, 
This is um, the cloak of Athene, decorated with the gorgon's head. Um, it's typical for her uh, attire for her. Um, and this causes the suitors to run about terrified as Odysseus's men chase them, smashing their heads in. Leodes clasps Odysseus's knees and begs for mercy. He says he did nothing wrong and tried to stop the bad behaviour. He was their priest, but Odysseus beheads him anyway. Phemius, the minstrel, who was an unwilling bard for the suitors, clasps Odysseus's knees and begs for mercy. He says it is bad to kill a gifted bard, um, and even Telemachus knows that he was unwilling. Telemachus corroborates his story, saying that he shouldn't be punished. He also names Medon the Herald as an innocent. Um, so it is interesting that Homer has uh, commented that a gifted bard shouldn't be killed, because obviously he, if Homer um, was one person, which is the general assumption, but he could have been multiple people, um, it's kind of saying, you know, I'm make self-justifying, um, demonstrating his own worth, trying to make people respect him more, in a sense. So, oh, oh also, before I continue, uh, Telemachus, the fact that Telemachus now can even spare Phemius and Medon and, and tell his father, you know what, don't, don't kill them, that is another demonstration of his character development, because he has now got, um, the strength to say these things and to disagree with his father. Medon emerges from his hiding place under a chair, clasps Telemachus's knees in supplication and begs for mercy. Odysseus tells him not to fear, he is spared. He tells the two men, now safe, to go into the courtyard and wait. Odysseus looks around and sees that all of the suitors are dead in piles. He tells Telemachus to call Eurycleia, um, which he does, and she comes out to see Odysseus amongst the corpses like a lion. She wants to cheer in triumph, but Odysseus stops her, because it is dishonourable to exult over the slain. Again, this is um, heroic morals. Even though he's committed this murder, he's killed these people, it was for a reason, for what he believes is a just reason, because they dishonoured Xenia, they courted his wife, etc, etc. Um, but he is still heroically moral in the fact that he won't exult over the slain, he won't... Um, rejoice in their death. He asks her which women were disloyal, and she tells him that of the fifty serving women, twelve were shameless. Odysseus tells her to send him the disgraced women. He tells Eumaeus, Philotius and Telemachus to get the women to help them carry out the dead and clean the building, and then after the women have done the clearing up of sort of the blood and gore, then they should be executed. The women cry as they take out the bodies and clean the palace. Obviously, the women, the women, the women that are doing this, the ones that are going to be executed, are the ones that slept with the suitors, and most of them genuinely love the suitors. Um, there was a class difference, and the suitors generally viewed them as, uh, uh, you know, sexual, um, beings, not not ones that you would fall in love with, but the women loved them typically. Telemachus says that they don't deserve decent deaths, and so he takes a cable and hangs them. They take Melanthius, slice his nose off and ears, rip his penis off as meat for the dogs, and chop off his hands and feet. Back in the hall, Odysseus tells Eurycleia to bring sulphur to clean the pollution, and make a fire to purify the house, and then to ask Penelope to come with her maids. Eurycleia agrees, but asks to bring him proper clothes. He says that the first thing he wants is fire. So she follows his advice, and the women embrace Odysseus. He remembers each one, which demonstrates that he is a good master. Okay, so that is the end of book 22. Um, and that is all that is set for the the OCR A-level, which is all I'm covering, really. Um, however, we don't actually see him reunite with Penelope, and that happens in the next two books, um, as it ends, it ends on book 24. What is interesting is that... Um, a lot of scholars have argued that book 23 and 24 weren't in the original Odyssey um, and that Homer or, you know, the people who wrote it or the person who wrote it um, intended for it to end at book 22 because this, there are sort of discrepancies with the with the language and the narrative in the last two books. This could either be um, because they were added later by other people or it could simply just be that there wasn't one writer or... or um, 
composer of this piece, but really that it was passed down from generation to generation, from narr- from narrator to narrator, and that is why there are language discrepancies. However, it is um, something to note that, that the last two books may not have been part of the original the Odyssey. However, that would leave it that we haven't seen the reunion between Odysseus and Penelope, which is obviously one of the most long-awaited things. This happens pretty much at the start of book 23, so just after um, just after Odysseus embraces the maids that have been faithful. Uh, and just to talk about their reunion, what basically happens is Penelope um, doesn't necessarily believe that this is the true Odysseus. She's been um, her her hopes have been up before. She's she's worried she's going to be tricked. She doesn't. She's it would it would cause her so much joy and then so much sadness if it turned out not to be true that she refuses to believe it. Um, and so because Odysseus is adamant that he is you know her long lost husband, she tests him and she says um, that she'll move the bed. And this is this enrages Odysseus because he. Um, when they got married, made their bed out of a tree. So he carved it, literally carved it into a tree. So it is immovable. You you can't move it. It's rooted to the ground. Uh, but he's the only one that would know this other than her. Um, and so the fact that he is angry that she even suggests this um, and and sort of is like, well, how how can that even happen? I've I've you know I built the, this into a tree. That proves to Penelope that he is her true husband. Um, and they are reunited, they embrace, they have sex, and Athene makes the night longer so that they can truly catch up, so that night lasts for a lot longer than it should do. And then in book 24, Odysseus goes to see his father, Laertes, who had become a recluse. He, for some reason, unknown reason, no one really knows why, he decides to deceive his father and pretend that he isn't Odysseus and test him. And then when his father is sad about Odysseus not being there. He then reveals himself. It's very weird. Um, And then the the suitors' families, obviously now know that the suitors are dead. They come hunting for Odysseus en masse. There's looks like there's about to be another fight. And then Athene, on the orders of Zeus, puts a stop to it and tells them all to stop fighting and just to accept their losses and accept Odysseus as their returning king. And that is how the entire Odyssey ends. So it is a bit of a weird ending. Personally, I'm not a fan of it. I think it's a bit of a, ugh, a bit of a letdown, really. But um, but yes, it's important to note that the last two books may not have been part of the, the original. Okay, well, thank you for uh, listening, watching all of these summaries. I hope they've been useful. Um, I'm sure I'll have more classics and and history things uh on my channel soon. Thank you.